I am indeed Cam Rogers. We are presented by AutoList. Are you looking for a new or used car out there? Tired of browsing a million sites? Go to AutoList.com to browse the largest source of inventory on the web or download their top rated mobile app for Android and iPhone users today. Cam Rogers with you. We've got some NFL headlines to get through and we'll start things off with the Curious case of Michael Kendricks, who I believe has signed with the Cleveland Browns. It's a one-year deal, $3.5 million with Cleveland, joining a pretty solid linebacking core. They got Shorebert there and a couple of other young players that I think Michael Kendricks will really relish as a leadership kind of role here. But this whole thing was not as clear as originally thought. So Ian Rappaport originally reported that Kendricks signed with the Browns. And then things got kind of awkward. So Kendrick's clap back on Twitter. We'll show you a tweet from a St. Pioneer press writer who was on the phone with Kendrick's. Here's what he said. So free agent linebacker Michael Kendrick's, quote, no, it's not accurate signing with the Browns. That's all I have to say. I'm not really talking about it. And then Michael Kendrick's went into Ian Rappaport's replies and said this. You will never have my respect. And Michael Kendricks, by the way, is not a frequent tweeter. You go on his timeline, he's not exactly uh, a day-to-day kind of guy on social media. So to see this kind of stuff is pretty interesting. For some reason, this whole story struck a chord with Michael Kendricks. And from a player perspective here, I understand where he's coming from. I think sometimes... Players want to break the news themselves or they want the team itself to break the news and they feel like they are getting undercut, if you will, by these NFL insiders here because, well, they're breaking the news and Michael Kendricks can't do it first. I think that's where the frustration is coming from. So Kendrick, Kendricks was formerly a free agent uh, after the Philadelphia Eagles cut him following a really good 2017 season. Also visited the Raiders and the Vikings last week. Uh, and uh, it would have been an interesting story, by the way, if he joined the Vikings because Eric Kendricks, his brother, is there. But this brings up a philosophical question for you guys. Because the way in which we gather news sometimes can be unreliable. How do you get your NFL news out there? Mobile? Desktop? Newspaper? Perhaps somewhere else? Of course, right here on the Cam Rogers Show, we hope. But let me know, because this just got me thinking, this whole story here. And just to uh, reiterate, he is signing with the Cleveland Browns. It is a one-year deal. It is $3.5 million with incentives. But the story went, Ian Rappaport tweets, then the St. Pioneer press writer calling Kendricks and Kendricks denying it, Kendricks replying to Ian Rappaport, you have lost, lost all of my respect. And then Jordan Schultz of Yahoo Sports tweeted out some monetary amounts in terms of the deal. The St. Pioneer Press reporter confirmed it, and here we are. So it sounds certainly like Kendricks is signing with the Cleveland Browns, but it just got me thinking about like how we live in this new media age, if you will, of immediacy, and perhaps some earlier reporting than really it should be. Perhaps some people should kind of take their time and check their boxes and then report something. We've seen that multiple times in politics and so many different areas of reporting. So let me know how you guys get your news. Curious. All right, let's go to the next headline on the list here. Rob Gronkowski is returning for mandatory mini camp, which is sad from a media perspective because I really do want to talk about how the Patriots are crumbling before us. But I can't say that about Rob Gronkowski because he has confirmed to be a full go and that he is indeed Looking forward to it. Mandatory minicamp begins this week. It consists of three days. And there's been some buzz about the Patriots tweaking Gronkowski's contract for the 2018 season. They added around $5.5 million in incentives to his deal last year. The idea is something similar could happen this season. And if you look at his base salary for 2018, it is not indicative of his play and his ability, $8 million. 
So there you go. Gronk is back. Tom Brady is expected to be back as well for mandatory minicamp. So Patriots fans, guess you have nothing to worry about. The dynasty perhaps is not eroding like we once thought. But I'll believe it when I see it when Tom Brady is on that football field for mandatory minicamp. I do believe Gronkowski because he has been in conversations with Bill Belichick and basically saying that he will be ready to go for 2018. So there you go. Let's take a look at a former wide receiver here. If anybody out there is hoping for a Calvin Johnson comeback, it ain't happening because Johnson confirmed to the Detroit Free Press that the multiple ankle injuries he suffered as a player simply don't allow him to play at a high level anymore. Here's what he recently said. Quote, and this is unbelievable, by the way. I get up from bed sometimes in the morning. I shuffle across the ground because I can't bend my ankles. So he's getting up in the morning, and he's struggling to walk to the bathroom, for crying out loud, to brush his teeth. So for anybody out there thinking, hey, maybe he can make an NFL comeback, I don't really think anybody actually was. He was more of a story, Calvin was, last offseason when teams did show some interest for him. But if you can't extend your ankles or move them around, if you have no ability, mobility, I should say, you're running flat-footed, essentially. So Calvin Johnson, comeback, ain't happening. Maybe he heads into the broadcast booth, the coaching sphere, certainly not on the football field as an active NFL player. So Megatron... It's all but over. You can put the nail in the coffin there if anybody actually thought he could make a comeback. All right, tough story here for Clay Matthews. It could have been worse. He broke his nose in a charity softball game and was pitching when the incident occurred. He will have surgery on it when the swelling subsides. He did confirm this on Twitter. It was a line drive right to the face. He ran off the field and then quickly went to the uh, emergency room. Which, of course, all things considered, good news, just a broken nose, and he sounds to be in good spirits as well. So it could have been concussion-related or maybe even getting hit in the eye or something like that. So all of that aside there, not the case. Clay Matthews should be fine. It's just a broken nose, and I say just a broken nose. Obviously, I'm sure it's very painful, and he has to go through surgery, but nothing long-term or anything like that. So Packers fans... Rest at ease. All right, let's take a look at Patrick Mahomes here. How about this? He is not accepting endorsements until he proves it on the football field. His agent occur, uh, confirmed this, Lee Steinberg. Last year was for obvious reasons. Why have the guy on billboards and commercials when he wasn't even the starting quarterback Alex Smith was? But this season... For him, it's all about proving his worth. And I love this decision. I think it's a very mature one at that. Because, <clears throat> number one, well, yeah, of course it's mature. I just think you're not uh, portraying yourself as some cocky kind of quarterback that you think you're good and you haven't even proven yourself on the football field. But number two, it's a strategic decision from Mahomes because it doesn't add unneeded pressure on him to perform at the quarterback position. He already has enough pressure. Why go out and advertise for companies and commercials and billboards and magazines and give yourself more pressure to perform as the Kansas City Chiefs starting quarterback when you could just not do all that, go onto the football field, win games, okay, you've proven yourself, now let's cash out and let's see what happens with the Kansas City Chiefs and the AFC West. I think it's a great move from a couple of fronts. So Mahomes is well equipped this year to have success. There's no doubt about that. He's got Travis Kelsey at tight end. Top three tight end in my eyes. Kareem Hunt at running back. Coming off a pretty good rookie year. Tyreek Hill. He's electric on the outside. Then you've got Sammy Watkins, the new acquisition there. So which team will win the AFC West? That's a big time question for me because I think it could be any of these teams. Chiefs. Chargers, Broncos, and the Oakland Raiders. Give me a like, uh, laughing face, heart, and wow face, respectively. Be sure to let me know in the comments section behind your reasoning as to why you chose that respective team there. I will say right now, I think there's a possibility of actually getting two teams out of this division to make the playoffs. Chargers and Raiders. I have my 
wariness about the Kansas City Chiefs right now, particularly with that offensive line and the front seven. I know they've addressed that a little bit, but the front seven was not very good last year, especially in stopping the run. And so they're going to have to figure out a way to control the line of scrimmage on that side of the ball. But I have no concerns at all about the offensive side. So we'll see what happens. I think the Chargers on paper should win the AFC West. Whether or not they will remains to be seen. All right, let's get to the next headline here. Big story about Aaron Rodgers in that he may want an out clause in the next contract that he signs. So here is the story. According to Mike Garofolo, Rodgers wants some sort of out clause that would allow him to renegotiate the deal if slash when, really when, it's leapfrogged by other quarterbacks when they sign new contracts. So under Rodgers' current deal, dating back to 2013, the following quarterbacks have surpassed him in salary. Ready for these names? Andrew Luck who we didn't see in 2017 at all. Derek Carr, who dropped off in 2016, or excuse me, 2017, although I expect him to bounce back. Matthew Stafford. Jimmy Garoppolo, who has seven games worth of sample size as a starter. Kirk Cousins and Matt Ryan, all of which are inferior to Aaron Rodgers. And you could really say that about any quarterback in the NFL not named Tom Brady. So whatever Rodgers gets on his contract extension really does not matter in his eyes. This is the logic here because he knows someone will, will jump him in the money department. So as such, Rodgers wants the ability to renegotiate, to revisit the contract on the fly. And after all, he is at least the second best quarterback in the National Football League, if not the best and he deserves to be paid as such. We do go through all of these storylines here with contracts in that they don't necessarily uh, portray the ability of the player. We're talking about, for example, an $84 million fully guaranteed contract for Kirk Cousins. Do you think Kirk Cousins, in all reality, folks, is worth $84 million guaranteed? So from the team perspective now, what the Packers can do is just ignore what Aaron Rodgers wants, and they can just franchise tag him a couple times and be done with it. Now, of course, that runs the risk of creating some sort of division between the Rodgers camp and the Green Bay Packers front office in what could become a Kirk Cousins type of situation where Kirk Cousins, let's be honest, did not want to be in D.C. after getting back-to-back -back franchise tags. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't get what he wants, I mean, can you imagine how much angrier, angrier he will be compared to Kirk Cousins? Because Kirk Cousins is not the caliber quarterback that Aaron Rodgers is. So if Aaron Rodgers is even better, he might be even angrier if he doesn't get what he wants. And I actually think this is one of the top storylines to monitor this offseason, Aaron Rodgers' contract extension and what is actually written inside it? Does he get that clause? Does he get that ability to renegotiate things as other quarterbacks out there jump over him? So keep that in mind. Aaron Rodgers has his demands, at least according to NFL Network. Odell Beckham Jr., we know his demands. He wants at least $20 million per year or at least around that number, which is certainly a tall task. So the good news for Giants fans is that Odell is close to being fully cleared to practice. The bad news is that Odell may withhold from fully practicing until he gets that extension that he wants. So it's kind of a bittersweet moment for the Big Blue faithful. So SN, or SNY is reporting a possible contract showdown between the Giants and Odell. So there's no new word about progress from the negotiation standpoint between the Beckham camp and the New York Giants. As I mentioned, Beckham wants around $20 million per year, which is a big time ask if you ask me. Ian Rappaport, you may recall, reported back in March that OBJ won't set foot on a football field until he gets that extension and that report actually hasn't truly been tested yet. 
because Odell has yet to be fully cleared to practice. Yes, he's been going through drills, and yes, he's been present at voluntary OTAs, but that means nothing, of course, until he's actually fully cleared to go. And here's what I'll say. I think Odell Beckham Jr. has every right in the world to stay out until he gets what he wants. Uh, and the Giants, on the other side of things, have every right to kind of just kick the can down the road because they don't have to address this until next offseason because Odell is playing on the final year of his rookie contract in 2018. So what we're staring at here is a big fat game of chicken where eventually someone is going to budge here. And my inkling is Odell will probably play the final year of his rookie contract on that eight and a half million dollar salary and things will perhaps get settled next year. The question is, does Dave Gettleman, the GM and the Giants leadership want to run that risk of trotting out Odell on the football field in week one of the regular season if he even shows up and on an eight and a half million dollar salary, which is way underpaid, I agree. It's certainly not even close to the target amount that Odell actually wants. So, like I said, game of chicken, something to keep in mind. And if the Giants, I will say this, do not extend Odell and Odell plays throughout the regular season, the bridge could already be burned for 2019 where we could see Odell just say, you know what, you guys messed up with me. And maybe Eli Manning is done, by the way, too. Who knows? And he says, I'm going to go to someone who appreciates me. So it's Odell, it's... Le'Veon Bell, kind of in that same scenario there where Bell got the franchise tag, which is obviously not the same as Odell because he's on a rookie contract, but Le'Veon wants to get paid a lot of money too. So there you go. Does Odell deserve $20 million a year? Let me know in comments as we are on Facebook Live and YouTube. Hit me up. All right, let's go to the next story here. And we're talking about the national anthem and the Falcons national anthem strategy. So this is important, and I'm talking about this because every team is going to have to go through this discussion. The Falcons are the first to actually give us some sort of hint here. So, full stop, here are the options in terms of this new national anthem policy. You're on the football field, you stand. You're on the football field, and you kneel and face fines from the NFL. Or you stay in the locker room. Those are your three options in a sense. Two of them come with no punishment, staying in the locker room and standing for the anthem. The Falcons have said, and Matt Ryan specifically, that they will get to this discussion about a strategy in terms of going about the national anthem, and they feel that the best course of action is doing it in unison. So the entire team staying in the locker room, the entire team standing, or the entire team kneeling, which I think is the least likely scenario. I think the most likely scenario is the entire Falcons organization stands on the football field. Um, but I think this could perhaps be a good blueprint for other teams out there in that these NFL teams are going to have to sit down and be like, all right, guys, how do you want to do this? And if all the teams out there decide that they will go through their decision in unison, that probably combats any potential distractions out there and combats overall hurting team chemistry, right? I mean, think about it. For example, Kenny Stills has not ruled out kneeling during the national anthem this year on the football field. Let's say you have five to eight Miami Dolphins players kneeling on the football field. You have like 15 to 20 in the locker room and then you have the rest of the team standing. What does that show in terms of team chemistry, team cohesion? Probably not very good. From a PR standpoint, it doesn't look good. Steven Ross probably wouldn't be a fan of it, I don't think, because he was the guy that felt the pressure from the president to put forth this policy. Um, and how do you think it works in the locker room, too? Because some players who are standing are like, guys, we're getting railed by the media. We're getting railed by perhaps our owner. What's going on here? Why can't we all just decide on one decision? So I bring up this story because I think it's important from an NFL general perspective.
The Falcons are going through this, but every single team will have to go through this and have a discussion in terms of the best course of action. Be sure to let me know what you think that best course of action is. Everybody standing, everybody kneeling, everybody staying in the locker room, or hey, just let them do what they want. So be sure to let me know in comments. All right, speaking of the anthem, it brings up a lot of personalities and a lot of opinions. And that includes LeVar Ball. So LeVar Ball said that players in the NFL, and this is the TMZ Sports, by the way, should stand for the national anthem or stay in the locker room or leave the league. So Ball is taking the stance that because the NFL made its rules and it's now etched in legislation, you should follow said rules or simply leave. And a lot of people out there actually have that stance. I've seen a lot of people in the comments section on this very show saying that you work for the NFL and your boss says to either be on the football field standing or be in the locker room and doing with what you please. And as such, you should follow what your employer says. Sometimes I don't think it's that simple because we're not talking about accountants, right? In an office somewhere in the Midwest, we're talking about superstars, people with influence, people who are public figures. So I do think making that parallel is not the best route to go, but I do understand the logic, and that's the logic that LeVar Ball has. And taking this stance actually leads me to believe that he and the president would probably get along again because you may recall Ball notoriously feuded with President Donald J. Trump about the arrest of LiAngelo back in China. Uh, and uh, something does tell me that they probably agree on this topic. So can I just have Donald Trump and LeVar Ball on Twitter again? I really want that. I really do. Hey, are you a fan of LeVar? Let me know in the reaction poll. Give me a heart for you. Enjoy him. Or a leg for LOL, no, with the period. I put the period there because it adds a little extra emphasis. All right, let's get to the next storyline here. Tom Brady spotted at Gillette Stadium throwing the football with Julian Edelman, but was not present at OTAs. So the dynasty is crumbling, right? All right, so here's the deal. Brady will be at mandatory minicamp this week. If he didn't show up, he's going to get fined. So he better show up. That's why it is indeed mandatory. So Mike Giardi of NBC Sports Boston reported this story that Brady has been throwing with Julian Edelman in the Gillette Stadium practice bubble on a, quote, semi-regular basis. So for Patriots fans worried that Brady isn't all in, here's a little semblance of commitment and good commitment at that because Julian Edelman is coming off a big-time injury. So getting back on the same page with one of the Patriots' star wide receivers, probably a good thing. As I mentioned, Brady skipped voluntary OTAs. Yes, they're voluntary, but still not exactly Brady's MO. If he doesn't show for mandatory minicamp, I can't wait to be back on these airwaves and talking about how there is some very real friction between Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. I already believe that, number one, but if he doesn't show for minicamp, that just feeds into my narrative and the list of evidence points that I've been going through on this show about how there is something brewing between the Patriots' leadership and Tom Brady. But he says he's going to be at mandatory minicamp, and I'm sure he'll eventually do a press conference, and I'll tell you what, there will, there will be a lot of questions about uh, the Belichick-Brady relationship. All right, and then the final headline here, this is just kind of comical, but I kind of respect it. Delaney Walker says he's the best tight end in the league. Here's what he said. Quote, honestly, I feel like I'm the best tight end in the league in all phases. This is a direct quote. I am not taking it out of context. It is right there, plain sight for you guys. Uh, so maybe that would be the case, the lady. Maybe you would have a better argument if Rob Gronkowski retired. And maybe Delaney, for some reason, <laughs> hasn't been reading the news lately, but Rob Gronkowski is committed to playing in 2018. Look, Walker's a good tight end, definitely top five in the league. I would probably put Gronkowski and Travis Kelsey ahead of Delaney Walker in my rankings, just off the top of my head right now. But you certainly can't fault a player for making a statement like that because it shows confidence. It shows that, you know, they feel good about themselves. But whenever I hear these statements, 
I do sometimes give the side eye, like, did you actually just say that? Because Eli Manning said that once, and I want to say Joe Flacco said it once as well. And Joe really hasn't performed since that big contract in 2013, and Eli Manning has done what since that Super Bowl back in the 2012 campaign? So, or excuse me, the 2011 campaign. So there you go.